hola, welcome back to my channel and today we're going to be diving into the fascinating world of narcissism which is one I delve into quite a lot, you may have noticed. This week I'm going to be looking specifically at the narcissistic spectrum again, not the narcissism spectrum or not the self-esteem spectrum, so the actual narcissistic spectrum because narcissism isn't a one size fits all, it encompasses a range of behaviors and traits and understanding these variations is crucial for recognizing the behaviors in our lives and relationships uh, which can help us see what's going on around us. So narcissism is broadly defined as an inflated sense of self-importance, a deep need for excessive attention, admiration, troubled relationships, and a lack of empathy for others because uh, narcissists are omnipotent and omniscient and it's all about them. However, these traits can manifest in different ways, which is what this video is about, which leads to different types of narcissism, different types of narcissistic abuse, if you like. The first one, the most obvious, which most people know about is over narcissism. It is the most recognizable form of narcissism, and these individuals are often very, very charming, very charismatic, but they exhibit grandiose behaviors and a need for admiration. They are confident, boastful, they crave attention, they want you to worship them because they are, according to them, amazing. For instance, uh, Dr. Malkin describes over narcissists as people who openly display their need for validation and superiority. They are typically extroverted and enjoy being in the spotlight. So you may well encounter them in uh, the work environment. There'll be bosses, there'll be managers, there'll be business owners. They are not saying that every boss or business owner is a narcissist. There'll be also people who dominate conversations. They expect constant praise and they react, and this is key, very aggressively to criticism. They are driven by this overinflated sense of self-importance and they believe that they are superior to others and deserve special treatment. And if you threaten that in any type, way, shape or forms through some kind of like, you know, uh, critical feedback, uh, maybe you don't like them and you make that quite obvious, they'll perceive that as a threat. What are you threatening? You're threatening seeing right through it and going through to the and I've done a video on this, I'll put it up, the vulnerable child inside, that wounded person inside, they call it the true self. Um, and the, you have this with narcissists, this false self, this shell around them, which can be quite tough, but sometimes people are able to threaten to penetrate through it, and that's when they get aggressive. This type of narcissism is char characterized by arrogance, entitlement, omnipotence, omniscience, uh, not genuinely, they think that, and a lack, definitely a lack of empathy. It's, that's another red flag, and I've done videos on this as well. You need a combination of these behaviors to then go, because we all have narcissistic traits. Combination of these behaviors leads to, oh, I'm dealing with a narcissist. These traits can be easily identified in social settings where overt narcissists seek to be the center of attention and they often disregard others' opinions or feelings. They're listening, but they're not really listening and they respond in order to bring themselves forward again. So, you know, you might say something about yourself and some of your achievements and they'll cut right across and go on about them. So, and it's kind of, you get that feeling of, oh, okay. And sometimes they can kind of be quite charming with it and you go, oh. And then you realize after a few conversations, it's always about them. They don't actually continue the conversation we were having. Next one, covert narcissism, which again, if you look through the playlist, I've done a co uh, video on covert narcissism. It is way more subtle and it is a lot less obvious than overt narcissism. These Covert narcissists often present shy, humble, even insecure. They might come across as, you know, a bit of a victim of the environment all the time. I've, I've been persecuted a lot. And they harbor intense feelings of entitlement and envy. They're extremely hypersensitive to criticism and they uh, can often be quite passive aggressive. They're like uh, vulnerable narcissists, if you like. They often feel inadequate and are hypersensitive to others, how others perceive them. Uh, which leads to behaviors that can be manipulative or passive aggressive. Again, you'll notice it, it's always about them. You know, they, uh, I have had a lot of um, people come in the room who've had say like uh, covert narcissistic parents um, where, you know, it was always about them. I always had to feel sorry for them. I always had to make it better for them um, at detriment to self. And you might find that, you know, whereas the overt narcissist is much more in your face 
and you know like kind of like love me worship me adore me and if you don't i'll be angry this is a lot more like almost guilt tripping you all the time guilt tripping you guilt tripping you getting you to do things feeling sorry for them all the time and sometimes they can be quite helpful back but when their efforts aren't recognized unlike the overt narcissist the covert narcissist doesn't openly seek admiration but will manipulate others to get their needs met so they may play the victim to gain sympathy or use guilt like i said to control the other person so it's this kind of and again it's that one is really insidious and it's very it's very damaging it's very hard to detect and you it can take years before a person realizes oh, i'm involved with an overt narcissist um but by that point you're probably really really worn down by them some of their tactics will be the same as the overt narcissist they'll be gaslighting they'll be word salad um they will make you doubt your reality or or they'll play the martyr they're always portraying themselves as the misunderstood or the wronged party this type of narcissism can also be particularly, as I said, insidious because it often goes unnoticed and it causes, it does really does cause long-term emotional harm to those around them. Like disclaimer here, doesn't necessarily, just because someone has had a lot of bad things happen to them, doesn't make them an, a, a covert narcissist. Maybe someone has had a whole load of shit dealt their way over a period of years and it has brought them down to this Maybe they are sitting on their pity pot. Doesn't necessarily mean they're a narcissist. It's looking for the what they're doing, how manipulative they are, how much they do that, how much they get someone to feel guilty. Relaying one story and saying, I've had a hard, hard, a few hard knocks along the way, and I'm kind of like a bit defeated and I've got a bit of a low self-esteem and I don't know how to pick myself up, is not a covert narcissist getting you to feel guilty, criticizing you if you don't feel guilty and you don't help them, that is the sign of the covert narcissist. So let's move beyond the overt and the covert narcissist. There are a few others that are worth mentioning and discussing. Communal narcissism, uh, where individuals see themselves as exceptionally altruistic and kind and they derive their narcissistic supply from being seen as the ultimate caregiver or the most charitable person uh, uh, in the crowd uh, so they may constantly volunteer for high visibility charity work but except but expect excessive praise and recognition for their efforts and I'm sure we've all come across this and you kind of go mm, okay what's this really about so these communal narcissists if you like often believe they are morally superior to others and they use their selflessness as a means to garner admiration it, that's a little bit easier to spot most of the time and again that's not necessarily towards the individual that is like i said it's communal so but you can there are people who do this it's not this i'm not necessarily sure it's abusive uh, or manipulative thinking about it but it's kind of it's not about the cause it's about them which kind of says well on a compassionate level they're quite insecure they need some kind of validation, so they get their validation this way. But it's not like directly selecting someone out to then abuse them and drain them and wear them down like an overt or a covert narcissist might do. Uh, another one to be aware of is malignant narcissism, which is a more severe form that combines narcissism with antisocial behavior, aggression, and sometimes sadism. Uh, malignant narcissists are not just self-centered they're like I said pretty dangerous they're quite destructive and they will engage in or might engage in manipulative and harmful behaviors without remorse and it makes them particularly challenging to deal with and this type of narcissism often includes elements of paranoia aggression which leads to highly toxic and abusive behaviors Another one we can look at is somatic narcissism. And these narcissists are obsessed with their physical appearance and bodily image, which goes right back to the original myth, staring into the lake and the river at your own image, being completely intoxicated by your own beauty, and then falling in the river like Narcissus did, and uh, well, it destroys you. Um, basically, it annihilates the self. So, like I said, this is uh, being obsessed with your own or their own physical uh, appearance and bodily image, seeking validation through physical attributes, constantly seeking admiration for uh, their looks or their physical prowess, 
uh, they might spend an excessive amount of time and money on their appearance, expecting others to constantly compliment their looks. If you want to take that one a little bit further, yes, it does happen a lot on social media and social media does kind of encourage that. It's not a new thing, it's an old thing. You know, encouraging beauty, extra filters, more this, more that. Okay, that's mainly aimed at, wi aimed at women, but also men are involved in this as well now and it can actually create this kind of narcissism and create this kind of like uh, very one-dimensional side to people and then once they start getting validation that way that validation is quite addictive and then that becomes how they value themselves and then that causes distress further down the line i mean like i said this is not all about narcissistic abuse this is about high levels of narcissism which can be actually detrimental to the self um and this can like with the with the uh, the aesthetic narcissism, you know, being obsessed with your own beauty, this can start in teenagers, you know, quite young, because of all the influences that are bombarded there. So, you know, look for validation, well, one from yourself, obviously, but look for validation from other areas, you know, where else am I good at? Where else am I valued? Because looks will fade. Cerebral narcissism is another one. Um, and in contrast, uh, cerebral narcissists derive their self-worth from their intellect and their academic achievements. They believe they are intellectually superior to everybody else and often, and here's where the, it kicks in, they all often belittle people who they consider less intelligent. So you are beneath me because you are less intelligent. A cerebral narcissist might dominate conversations with their knowledge and dismiss other people's opinions and ideas as inferior whether or not the idea is inferior or not or has any validity or any equal standing, they will just dismiss it because it didn't come from them. So understanding these distinctions helps in recognizing various narcissistic behaviors and then you can tailor your kind of response to each type uh, of uh, narcissism which presents itself in front of you and the unique challenges uh, that they bring, which require different strategies for coping and managing uh, various relationships uh, and various social settings. You might even come across, you know, hey, actually I'm slipping into this type of narcissism, you know, I'm in an environment which encourages this and I'm slipping in a way I didn't realize I was slipping and I don't like I'm going that way. So maybe, you know, some of this information is kind of helpful and can help you change direction uh, in terms of how you, uh, your self-concept which can move you back down. If you look at the other video I did about narcissism and the spectrum, move you back down to a healthy level of narcissism, a healthy level of self-esteem, healthy level of self-concept or healthy, healthy self-concept, a balanced, congruent. So the impact on relationships uh, that these different types of narcissists can have uh, it will be quite unique. I'm gonna run through them briefly. Overt narcissists, very controlling, very dismissive, no empathy, no remorse can be quite cruel, will be devaluing, and will eventually discard you, most likely. Uh, whereas COVID narcissists may well manipulate you through guilt or passive aggression, get you to feel sorry for them, you're constantly running around for them, they're the center of your world, you don't put yourself first. Uh, communal narcissists may well use their perceived altruism to control others, expecting constant gratitude and admiration. Malignant narcissists, well, I think that's quite an obvious one, they can be outright abusive and dangerous, requiring very strong boundaries, and a lot of the time professional intervention. So, give you an example. Romantic relationship. Overt narcissists might dominate the relationship, making all the decisions and expecting their partner to constantly admire them and support them. And a covert narcissist, on the other hand, may, may well undermine their partner's self-esteem through subtle manipulation, leading to a toxic dynamic where the partner feels perpetually at fault all the time and responsible for the other person's wellness. So to cope with these various types of narcissists, it's essential to set firm boundaries and seek support from friends. Like I said, check it out with network, with your network, because often, like especially with overt and covert, people tend to get separated off and isolated because that's what they want. They want, you, they want you all to themselves and then they're gonna drain you until there's nothing left. So you'll feel yourself pulled away from your network, you'll become confused, you'll be gaslit, uh, you'll receive word salad, you'll, you'll have had the love bombing stage before, which is the beginning of the manipulation. Like I said, it's essential to set firm boundaries and seek support from friends and family and understanding the type of narcissism you're dealing with because quite often the best way to deal with a narcissist is to actually 
walk away, is to leave because you're not going to fix them. You're not going to rescue them. They're gonna continue that behavior because they need that narcissistic fuel supply and there's gonna be nothing left of you at the end of it. So put them at arm's length. Uh, I just agree with them and leave. Yeah, okay, you win, you're fine, you're done. Yeah, okay, uh, you know. That's the best way to deal with them. And again, I've done a ton of videos on this, so please look back through the playlists um, to find out you know, specific, way, specific things to look out for, how to detach from a narcissist, uh, how to recognize what kind of narcissist you're dealing with, um, and how to recover from being in a relationship with a narcissist. So I hope this little insight helps, and I look forward to seeing you again. And in the meantime, please take very good care of yourselves. Adios.